Hi there, my name is Cuppy Kate, and welcome back to our Wolf Talks. It's been a long time since we've had one of these, mainly because we've been playing the same wolves for a while now. But now that we have finished Seraph, I want to use this opportunity of Empty Sundays to have some Wolf Talks to go back and talk about our wolves, give them some extra storytelling time, and to be able to start really connecting the stories together, weaving them all together so that you know how this all connects and maybe some of you can even predict the future. But I think the best way to do that would actually be to go back and watch some of these episodes, but we're going to look at a particular wolf today and I know many of you have been waiting anxiously to hear about this wolf. It's not a wolf that we've played, but a mate of a wolf that we've played, and that is Dusk, Dawn's mate. We're gonna look at him and we're gonna talk about him today and kind of give some insight since, you know, while we were playing Dawn, he kind of got a bad rap because of one mistake he made, kind of started a sequence of events that got Dawn killed but was it really Dusk's fault? Or was it Dawn pushing herself too far? Or was it Mikhail making her feel like she had to prove herself? Or was it all of the above? So let's get into this. So as you can see, I am in my playlist, which has gotten to 171 videos, y'all. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Also, as I'm going through here, I already know it was poorly organized to begin with. Like technically all the episodes are in the sequence of when they were uploaded, but it's still a mess. <laughs> uh, so I'm probably going to split these up maybe between packs. Uh, so that's a little easier to follow, especially separating the Snagglefang from the Ovarian pack. But you know, some of the Arvarian pack is actually in there together. So I, I don't know, maybe I should do it by series. All right, so we are going to click on the video in which we actually lose Dawn. I'm going to watch it. I'm gonna point out things as we go and we'll talk about it. And then we'll get into what happened to Dusk after Dawn died and before he went to Mikhail. I think I found the part where all of this happened. So I'm gonna full screen and we're gonna try and go through this. I do feel so much safer. Is that it? Uh, so you can see that Dusk was over here and he got the elk calf while Dawn was looking at a moose calf, but you can see her health is already horribly low. Dawn and Dusk were an amazing couple. Um, they were very much a power couple. The fact that they got as far as they did with the no den challenge. So as a reminder, or for any of you that have not watched the series, I'm sorry if this is spoilers, but Dawn did do the no den challenge until she got to the rendezvous site. But they ended up doing really well killing moose calves once the time of year came where they could kill baby ungulates. And they took down quite a few, but look, at how horrible her health is up there. But they're exhausted, both of them are, because your mate usually matches up pretty much exactly where you are. And she is brutally injured right now, has absolutely no business. But you could tell behind my little screen down here, Dusk had gone in and eaten the elk. Did y'all eat all that? The elk calf. Because <laughs> they're, they're all still hungry. Yep. Cow. Yep. No. You don't get to eat stuff at the <laughs> first. Um, now, for our story, that was pretty tragic. So I think I've said this before in other episodes, but I kind of want to go through it again. Dawn and Dusk didn't have perfectly easy lives, but the hardness of their life was the fact that they didn't have a den. But they didn't lose any pups. They were fine. They were doing so well that they were literally ruling the land by walking on it and not staying in one place. They were a power king and queen and would have, assuming Dawn had lived, taken Mikhail's place as ruler, probably, until Dawn and Dusk chose their own heir. And so had Dawn lived, we would have been choosing an heir from her and Dusk compared to how horrible of a time Aurora had 
And as I said before with Aurora, she probably would not have wanted to take Mikhail and Kirby's place. She, she would have stepped down and given it to her sister had Dawn survived. And so we would have been choosing an heir from Dawn's lineage instead of Mikhail or Aurora. Mikhail would have just moved on saying, I gave it to my, my firstborns, my first litter, and then they will choose from their firstborns or their first litter. But because Aurora still stepped down and Dawn had passed, Mikhail is now forced to choose from his other children and is stricken with grief. Just in this last series, he has found out that Dawn has perished. So since we're kind of on this topic of timeline, I wanted to point out that somebody did actually leave me a comment, I believe it was Tora, that said, hey, wouldn't Mikhail and Teo have been sick when Dawn and Aurora were out having puppies? I actually went back through my timeline when I read that and I was like, yeah, it would not actually have been this litter as far as the way the game plays, right? So <laughs> I messed up the timeline, guys. Big shocker. <laughs> it is a lot to keep track of and I also get really excited when I want to pull the stories together and even a little impatient. And I think I was just like, oh yeah, wait, yeah, they would totally without doing enough research on it, which I'm kind of ashamed about and I apologize that I got wrong. But thank you for telling me because I had to kind of go back and have some thought and I was like, well, what do I do? How do I fix this? Is there a way to fix this? Do I have to ignore it? Because the story has been told. I don't want to backtrack and say that it didn't happen. Everything that happened in the previous series happened. We're not uncanoning that, it's canon. And so I was like, well, okay. Dawn is gone, so we definitely won't be playing her anymore. It's highly, highly, highly unlikely we're going to be playing Aurora again. Because of how Aurora did, and in her story, how she goes back to Mikhail and essentially says, "I it doesn't matter that my sister's gone, I'm not taking your place, I can't. Emotionally, physically, I can't do it. This was too much for me, and she may end up um, not having pups anymore uh, and just continue to live with her father and mother. Uh, I don't know what that means for her mate. I think that perhaps since, you know, they have a little bit of husky blood in them, it may not matter, but I don't know that she would breed anymore. And so it might just be better if Aurora's line just kind of goes on. We have Aurora, we have her first litter that remained, and that's that. And that's okay. I think that's fine. And so now looking at that and the fact that, that we won't play them anymore, it's possible that we could say that uh, they actually had their pups at age two. Now I did look it up because I didn't want to be incorrect on when wolves can have uh, pups and start breeding. I saw when I looked it up that it said between the ages of two and three, it would have been still a little early for them to have pups, but I think that's going to be the best way to make this aging sequence make sense is that they did end up having puppies at age two rather than age three. Again, that's a little early, but I can show you. So thanks to wonderful Google here. <laughs> I did happen to look it up, what age do wolves have pups? And it does say that most female wolves first breed when 22 months old, which is actually less than two years, um, but usually produce fewer pups than older females, which is really interesting. I didn't know that, so we found out something new today. But 22 months is not quite two years. So for our story, we could say that they just had pups as soon as they could. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, they may not have had as many pups as they did, but maybe due to some of their dog blood from their grandmother, uh, Kiba, they were able to have more and that's why they had so many. But you could even come down here and look up the physical and social development of uh, wolf pups. And you can go all the way down and you can see between one and three years, they do reach sexual maturity. So even though 
uh, I have done a lot of research on uh, dog breeding because I, a long time ago, I wanted to breed Kiba. I have since changed my mind about breeding animals. I'll just keep that opinion to myself though because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings because we're all allowed to have our own opinions. But I chose to fix her and not breed her, but I had done a lot of research to figure out what was the right time. And you're never ever, ever supposed to uh, really breed pups or wolves or dogs even um, until they're at least a year and a half but really it's better to wait until they have had two to three heats without getting pregnant it's healthier for the animal and they're more likely to have a healthier uh, litter that way so fun fact um, and there may be other research that says the opposite but at the time when I was researching that's what it told me so I thought I would share that info with you Anywho, back to our actual topic of the day desk. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to clarify that because I had messed up the timeline. So we're just going to say that Dawn and Aurora were actually two when they had their puppies, not three. And they did indeed have their litters at the same time that Mikhail was of five years old in this last litter. So I'm fixing that <laughs> and then we're going to leave it there. <laughs> I will try so much better to keep in track of our timeline. I just, I don't know why I didn't like look at it before I decided this is going to be the litter that Dawn dies. <laughs> we did just watch Dusk take the elk calf. And now we're going in to get this moose. And I think it goes badly if I remember correctly. Oh yeah. Woo! Oh, I didn't realize. You could actually see Dusk running with his tail in between his legs right there. If we just go back like a few seconds. Uh, he got hit kind of hard. That hurt a lot. See his tail? Okay, that's not good. Yeah, okay. So interesting. Interesting that that happened. Uh, it's possible that he, at that point, was so afraid for Dawn. At that point, he was like, stop. No more. We can't take this. We can't take this. Which is kind of a shame because his health was just fine. Um, but that brings me back to what I said previously about Dusk is that they had done so well in, in their series that I think he got uh, complacent in how well things were going. It's something that's very, very easy to do, uh, even just as a human. If you're like doing really, really good at something, it's so easy to not push to be better. And I think that that's what happened as Dusk became a little complacent. He probably ate the elk calf because he was really hungry and he's like, oh, we'll find food, it'll be fine. But then when Don was like, well, we're gonna get food right now. He was like, what? And now the pups were pretty hungry. So like, I can see why I as a player was like, oh, we need to get more food. Like they were half. Um, and so that was probably intimidating and they probably didn't have a kill they could eat off of either. So this is why this all happened. <laughs> but Dusk eating that calf and not letting the pups finish it, this is what started the whole thing. But that doesn't mean that it was his fault what happened to Dawn. Let's keep watching. But now I need this food to heal. Yeah, so that was the other thing is that um, as a player, I knew that if Dawn didn't get enough food, she wouldn't heal as well. And so that's why I kept pushing. I think for our story, a part of her maybe was like, I have an empty stomach, you know, I need uh, fresh blood, fresh meat to nourish my body that's like broken right now. And so she went out and continued to hunt, but this is still in a way, it's that, that dreadful snaggle fang pack ambition that gets caught up in some of these wolves that descend from Kiba and Bane. That ambition that pushes them so hard that they end up getting themselves killed. And it shows with how much Dawn is pushing right now. Okay, so Dawn is going to fill herself up with this. Interesting, so sh we did actually end up catching that moose calf. So the pups do eat. So interesting going back and watching there was definitely an opportunity for Dawn to just not you know and I think 
in my head as a player, which honestly fits Dawn's personality really well. Uh, there's such a power trip when you kill a moose calf because there's so much danger involved. Going to pick a fawn out of a grass patch doesn't have much difficulty to it besides the finding of it. But once you find it, it's like you have it. But there is some fun chaos about chasing down a moose calf and it provides the most food for pups. So as a player, it's very tantalizing. The rookiness of me continuing to go after a moose calf, I can tell from my, my past playing abilities that even before when I was looking at that moose uh, and the way that I chased the calf, I'm like, why are you side by side with it? You need to be behind it so that the mom can run ahead. So like I was making rookie mistakes, but as I've always said, like even with the thing with Aspen where I misclicked, my playing sometimes makes the story better. So my rookie behavior here and not playing as cautious or as smart almost fit Dawn's personality so perfectly that she would be on such a power trip that every time she saw a moose calf, she would want it because she's so good at getting them. So again, we're really seeing that Dawn's behavior is actually what's leading her to her death. Sure, Dusk eating the elk calf and leaving the pups hungry did push her to hunt that previous move and moose and getting that moose calf. And it got her down to 6% health. So if he hadn't done that, she would have been able to heal better and may have had a better chance of surviving Crevice Lake Wolves. So in some ways, yes, it was still a bad thing. And some of it was still somewhat his fault, but also she could have just played it a lot safer. So everything is at play here. And this was the whole point of this video was to essentially say, no, Dusk is not innocent in this situation. But if Dawn had played smarter, if she had not let her ambition, her power trip, her high get to her in any way of being a queen and having to present herself as such and prove herself to her father, who at this point has been checking up on her constantly or looking for her, she may still be alive. So there's a lot of things at play here. Power and numbers, they're working together. Wow, this is a completely different moose and moose calf. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't realize there were so many it there was like so much prey in this area first meadow honestly is the best place to be if you want to keep finding prey it's open so you can see prey is everywhere it's easy to like search the grass patches during baby ungulate season because you're not having to like guess like oh did i check this spot already when you're in a lush forest it's really great and you can as you can see Abundance of prey. And this was the second moose and moose calf. Ooh, Dusk knew what he was doing. Mallow, no! Mallow, why? Oh, what this is when Mallow this? got sick. No! It's so funny to see how hard it was to get the, um, the elk to run. I have seen wolves, like Mikhail, for example. It doesn't work every time, but I have seen wolves run up to an elk herd and they're just like immediately horrified and they run away and then you have dawn who has this like i am queen ruler of the universe personality but she must not look that way <laughs> like even though she's got that attitude and that spirit every other animal in that whole situation was like <laughs> But then like Kirby runs into a situation and everyone's like, get out of the way, <laughs> leave, panic and run. <laughs> but to me, Kirby doesn't look like if you look at her other than the scratches across her face, she just looks adorable. Like she couldn't hurt anybody. She just looks hyper and friendly and she's just horrifying. <laughs> Anywho. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, ah, ah. No, 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 no. Oh, this was the injury thing. So all of that was really just the fact that she was so ambitious 
to get more food in the hardest way possible. <laughs> she could have just kept looking for mothers. She could have left Dusk at the, at the rendezvous site while she looked for moms. But Dawn wasn't like that. Dawn was never the, I'm gonna take the easy way out. I'm gonna take the safe way out. That was not her. That was not the life that she wanted to live and she didn't live that life. She lived life on the edge. She definitely took after her mother. <laughs> and she went in unafraid of anything except her father's approval which for some reason she felt like she never had because he was always watching over her and doting on her. And as sweet as that is, it ended up, I think, making her feel like she was constantly needing to prove herself that she could be a Kirby, for example, that she could be like her mom. And so in our events through that, that whole episode, we had Dusk that had grown complacent had become a happy, chunky, could eat and do whatever he wanted king, who was still loving a wonderful father and a great mate. Having made a mistake, pushed Dawn to go find food in the hardest way possible by that moose calf because it was so tempting. And her always wanting to prove herself didn't think, maybe this isn't a good idea, went after it, killed the moose calf, which kind of put her on a power trip so into the next day, where she had healed a little bit, but not a lot, found another moose calf that led her straight into the jaws of the enemy. What really, really got her killed was Crevice Lake. They were right there. She was not being careful on where she was, essentially. And she paid the ultimate price. But was it really Dusk's fault for all of it? No. It started the sequence but there are a lot of choices that were made that could have been different, that could have saved her life, and those didn't happen. And so Dusk got a really bad rap. It was very easy to blame him because he was the start of it, but it wasn't really his fault. So Dawn dies. We lose her. What does Dusk do? 